Hello everyone, this is General Hind Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today uh, I'm going to show you how to do the Calcutta Crush. This is Calcutta here, you see down in here underneath this guy. Calcutta is the, on this game, it's the capital of India. And so uh, that's one of the two British capitals. And uh, the I'm going to show you how to sack uh, this capital in, in three or four turns. We'll see. Um, it just depends on, on how the British respond. Um, but, uh, you know, look, this is such a, a, a guaranteed move that uh, we're only a couple of days after Grasshopper's Invitational Tournament there. And Grasshopper has already changed the rules. Uh, he had a token for um, that you would get as the Axis player for sacking Calcutta. But that, that token proved to be too easy to get for players there, so um, he's already taken that out. You don't get a token for, for taking out Calcutta anymore. Uh, that was a Calcutta for taking it and a uh, token for the Allies. Actually, no, it wasn't a token for the Allies for getting it back. Uh, that was uh, Sydney or London, I believe. But anyway, um, yeah, like it's, it's, it's uh, kind of a guaranteed one. Almost guaranteed, anyway. Uh, that you can stop it, but you're going to need really good dice, and and uh, you know, like even then, it's it's going to be difficult to do that. So, um, like I, I I've never used the the move before because um, when, um, like most of you, I'm still learning the game. Um, I'm getting pretty good at it, but. Uh, I just picked the game up again just over a year ago, so it's going to take some time to learn all the different moves and everything. And that's one of the reasons I was so grateful to go to this this tournament that that uh, that I was just at the Grasshopper Invitational because um, it, it exposed me to more uh, more and more of the the moves and everything. Like I read about things, but you know what? I uh, um, I, I prefer to have things demonstrated to me. And uh, without having much competition up here in Prince George, I haven't uh, I haven't had too many things demonstrated to me. I, I kind of go by uh, like I, I I learn a lot better by seeing something. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to to create this channel was to uh, to demonstrate things for for other people too. Because you know, like you could you could write it down in, in two or three pages, and I guarantee you, I'm gonna fuck something up on there. But if you show me once, I, I'm gonna learn it forever. So what I've done here is I've only like you, you see most of the board isn't set up over there. The only thing I've set up is uh, the Pacific side of the board over here. So the Japanese and the Americans are set up in the Anzac, and um, the the UK Pacific forces. I did set up this little fleet here that starts on the European side of the board as well as these two boats down here. But nobody else on the board over here are going to have anything to do with uh, the Calcutta Crush. There's not a whole lot that they can do to stop it or to, to enhance it if you're looking at the axis on the other side of the board. So uh, we had this move done to us in the finals. Uh, nobody did to us in the opening round, um, but in the finals, Gargantua was playing the, the Japanese player. And he, and he uh, he did this uh, move to us, and you know like I got to see it up close and personal at that point. So so now uh, I'm pretty confident that I know how it works. Um, anyway, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, so um, a couple of things. Oh, just a second. I I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I just had to grab something, and also I'm working with a new tripod. <laughs> I'm not used to this one. I was used to my old one, and then. Uh, uh, somebody stole it uh, overnight on, what was it, I guess it would have been Saturday, Sunday night, Sunday night somebody stole it uh, out of the Legion Hall in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll just uh, just take a look at this side of the table. So once again, I, I've set up uh, only this side of the board over here. Anybody that could have something to do with, with Japan crushing Calcutta in three or four turns. So I'm going to show you the way that uh, Gargantua uh, did this move against us. Um, but uh, also know that, uh, you know, that there's more than one way you could do this. I mean, it's uh, the general principle is there, but uh, you don't have to do it exactly like this, like like word for word or, or unit for unit. Um, uh, Sired Blood and I had talked in the, when we were formulating a strategy down in Niagara Falls in our hotel room, we had talked about what we would do with Japan and 
<laughs> ironically, we had exactly the same buy as he did. So uh, it's three transports and one artillery. I've always bought a, a industrial complex on the first turn, but uh, not this time. So let, let me let me show you um, how Gargantua did it. So what, basically, what he did, he did all the the China attacks that that, uh, that you would expect here. Let's just move this over to China and take a look here. Um, let me just move that to uh, get a good view of China. So he he moved everything ahead on China like this, right? Um, and 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 took China. Uh, this would be in here and in here. These guys will move up. Then. Uh, then he moved his navy down. I guess that would be a non-combat move. Well, oh, by the way, the, this one does not include a J1 attack. I suppose he could do a J1 attack, but I can see the value in not doing a J1 attack if you're going to do this. Uh, I would think that it would be good to leave the Americans on the other side of, of the Pacific if you were doing this move. So then he took his entire navy. So uh, you see all the navy up there? He took his entire navy and he brought it down to Hainan here. And uh, some of this might have been a non-combat move, of course, right? But the entire navy, except for one destroyer that he was he, he was using as a blocker, but he brought the entire navy down. I don't think, uh, yeah, the, he would not have needed the transports um, because he, he, there was no amphibious assaults. Um, but yeah, he brought the whole Navy, everyone in the pool, down. And then uh, then he did his attacks there. Well, actually, he brought the Air Force down too, right? So anybody that could reach um, Yunnan was in Yunnan, right? We can bring the bombers down there. The bombers are reaching Yunnan. And let me see, Formosa, one, two, three. Yep, yeah, Formosa, the fighter can, can reach. Um, I don't know that anybody else could reach down there. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, nobody else can reach down there. So the other planes would have been distributed, you know, around like here. This, these guys could have come down from Manchuria. And you got the Korean fighter. And an Okinawa fighter, they they can, they can. Uh, let me see, one, two. Nope, Okinawa, Okinawa can't reach either. Okay, so it was something like that. So it's basically like that, right? And then he resolved the combat, and I think he he, he did manage to take Yunnan out. But anyway, let's uh, let's take these off here. Let's take a couple of the Japanese off. So it was something like that when it ended. Now, after that, what he did was he congregated his air force down here, and that's a pretty standard play. Uh, that's usually what I do as well. All the air force lands here. And, you know, he just moves stuff around, moves guys up and all that. Uh, I, not, I don't know exactly. I, I'm just moving guys around, right? So it, it would have been something like this. So when he took out these guys, of course, in, in, in Hunan, Let's take another Japanese guy off for that. And remember, this is the this is the Japanese turn, the first Japanese turn. So um, that's basically what it looked like. Uh, is something like that, and uh, then the transports came down, and they brought uh, they brought more guys down, right? Like we bring this down from Japan, and and they, they can bring in this guy and this thing. And then uh, transport up here, he could have brought the guy down from Mokanawa. And let's bring a, let's bring the artillery down from Kiangsi that you weren't using on that turn. And so they're in there. I'll clean this up afterwards. I'll pause the video and I'll clean it all up. Uh, and then and then we'll reset. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Okay. I'm I'm just going to clean all this up. This is all just a bunch of non-combat movement, and uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've cleaned all that up down there now, and I put chips under these. Although you know I I I, I don't know that I would do that. Uh, it's just I wanted uh, I wanted you to be able to see this better. So what do we got here? I think we have we have six fighters here, 
uh, still two bombers, uh, three tactical bombers, and of course you, you've got your six planes on the aircraft carriers over here. Uh, you've taken Yunnan and Hunan and Anhui. Um, so then you, your turn ends, and uh, let's come back here. And remember, we bought uh, three transports and an artillery. I, I had forgot to put my uh, my tank on, so uh, when I was uh, doing all this, I put a tank on there. So there's the three uh, the three transports, and there's the artillery. That would, uh, I'd taken one off of there, so I'm just putting one back on. So there you go. That's the end of turn one. And um, at this, uh, you would get 41 IPCs because you've got that 10 IPC for not being at war. So there's uh, 41 IPCs there. Not too bad. So then uh, America goes and they do whatever they do. Um, uh, one thing they can't do is attack you, right? Because they're not at war. So they, they can't go in any Japanese uh, territories. They can go through them, but they can't stop in them. But you know, like they'll, they'll do, uh, they'll, they'll, probably what they'll do, let's just set this down here. What uh, most people will do is they'll bring all of their fleet up here and might as well bring uh, a dude and then the artillery up with you as well, right? So that's basically all they can do. They might fly their fighter out of there, uh, you know, like they could do that if they want. They could fly it to Guam, or you know, they could move their carrier up to Wake Island here and fly the fighter over to Wake Island. Um, they can't land it on any, like they wouldn't be able to bring it down to Australia because they're not at war. Um, but uh, you know, and they might let, let's take their boats out of there. They, they'd probably do that if you didn't do a J1 on them. So. Uh, Let's just put them in the Gilbert Islands, for, just for some halibut. I hear they got good halibut over there. Okay, then so um, so then it's China's turn, and China's gonna go in, and now they'll they'll, they'll want to take back the road, of course, right? They're gonna go into into Yunnan, and and uh, they're gonna take these guys out, and um, and let's say they lose a couple. Let's just uh, take two off of there. There we go. Now you're hoping that they take more off than that, but but we're going to take two off. And then what we do, any what we did is, was we flew the fire back there. And a lot of people will do that. And I'm going to show you in another video why what you can do with that fighter instead, right? But uh, they did whatever they did, and I'm not going to worry too much about it here. Like uh, you know, I could move them around, and it doesn't really make a difference uh, exactly where they are. But then you know, we'll put the four guys over here with the fighter. Okay, there we go. So, you know, China does something, right? They, they put their stuff on and then uh, that's, they, they got 12 IPCs and that's what they did. And they're happy because they got the road back and they only lost two things. So that's pretty good. They're walking around uh, with their heads up high. So then uh, Britain goes and they're happier than shit because they saved this uh, battleship over here. So, uh, you know, they're not going to take on the fleet over there. So one thing they're going to do is they're, they're going to move back here. Now, um, I notice most people, including me, they'll take this transport here and probably the cruiser and they'll come down here and they'll attack Ethiopia. So let's get rid of those because a lot of people do that, right? They might even bring the destroyer over, but I'm going to show you why that's not a good idea. Um, anyway, so that's what it'll look like. And, and they'll probably move a couple of guys more up here. Let's just move this guy back and move these guys up here. And we'll move the fighter back here. And uh, this guy probably went this way. So that's probably, it's probably gonna look something like that when you're done. And then they'll put their stuff on. What, what did they buy? Let's say they bought three dudes and, uh, and two artillery. That's 17 IPCs. That wouldn't be unheard of to buy something like that. Um, and actually they, they would have gone with a dude and an artillery so let's just uh, let's just go like that. That's probably what they'll have, and they might even have a let one less dude up here because they they probably they probably took one over to Africa. But anyway, that's that's what it's going to look like at the end of the first turn uh, around here. So I'll I'll give you a quick look at that. Now these guys they probably just consolidated, you know, like they're, they're hoping that they the Japanese didn't come down and spank them down there. So uh, and they might have come up here and. And taking a, a dude up here, a couple of dudes up here, so they can move them over to New Guinea. Let's just put them over here now. There we go. So they're they're going for their uh, national objective over there and hoping that Japan doesn't come down and whale them, even though they see that they've congregated down there. So then what do we do? Okay, uh, J2. This is what we're going to do. We're still not going to declare war. 
Now you could, uh, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do it uh, without declaring war. So your purchase on the next turn. Uh, oh, let's, these guys are going to do something too. Let's just say they all move back one space, these Russian guys. Uh, let's keep six of them up here. There we go. Let's do that. Okay, let me adjust this a bit. Okay, so uh, as you can see, there's four transports back here because one of them was here in C-Zone 20 and there wasn't much he could do. Um, so I just moved him back and, and we're going to move him down on the next turn. But what we're going to do for our buy this turn, we're going to buy a naval base, an air base. Uh, we had bought a naval base, uh, but Gargantua bought both and we thought, oh, well, that's a good idea after we've seen how he used it <laughs> to against us. Okay, so there's that, there's that. Um, and then there's uh, transport and like you got 11 IPCs left over here if, if that's what you took. And so I just threw in a, a transport and an artillery. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that's exactly what you're going to get. What's really important is these two right here on the second turn, the naval base and the air base. Okay, so you, then you're going to take your turn. And basically all you're going to do again is you're just going to, you know, you're, you're going to move everybody up. You know, let's just move these guys up and and move these guys up and and then let's come down uh, here and take these guys and you've got all these guys in here they're going to come after the road as well so all of these guys are going after Yunnan not the guys in Siam you don't want to declare war oh I guess you can't see sorry about that I can see what I'm doing just take my word for it okay so uh, this is this is what I've done I've moved as many people into into a, into Yunnan as I could, and I've moved everybody up as well, you know, as much as I could. And then what 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 he did, and and uh, what a lot of people will do these days. Okay, so let, let me just move this over here so I can make sure that you can see what what I'm looking at. Okay, so all the all the planes on the boats here, they're going to go in here and they're going to attack Yunnan. Okay, but all of these planes, and you've seen this move before too. A lot a lot of people will do this. These planes will leapfrog over, and my, my friend uh, from Hawaii there, <laughs> he, uh, he 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 calls this something or other. I can't remember what it is. I'm sure he'll comment on this and tell me what it, what that's called. But he's got some wacky wacky something move. <laughs> he calls it anyway. You just whip over here and and you roll against these guys, and you know like you hope you don't lose more than two planes or something. Um, maybe you don't lose any because you're definitely going to take that that guy out on the first turn, right? Uh, you're going to take his fighter out. You're going to take his dudes out, and you're going to lose two, maybe three three planes. So let's do that. Let's take these guys off, and we're going to lose. Um, let's say we didn't we didn't do very well and and we lost three planes. That that sucked, but we took them out. And then these guys came off in Yunnan, and we lost. They did well too. We lost two. So there we go. We got four units left there. These guys lost. We we'll take one of these guys off, and up here. These guys lost, and we'll take two of them off. Okay, let's do that. And then, uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, then you fly all your planes back. You fly your planes back to the boats, and you fly these guys back to uh, Kuang Si. All right. And, and then, uh, what else do we do? Oh. Yeah, you're, you're going to do a non-combat move, so let's let's move this up here. You can see where we're going then. Okay, so you got four transports here. So I think that's everybody but one, right? Yeah, that's everybody but one. So we're going to move four dudes down here, down to where all the planes are in Quangxi. Okay, uh, we'll take this, might as well take this guy with us, okay? Uh, this and, the, and these two and the tank. So let's move all that down there. I'll, I'll just put a chip under that guy under that our piece of artillery there. Just because space is at a premium down here. So there's that should be three artillery in total. And we brought the tank down. So that's what we have sitting there now. And, uh, and of course the four transports 
that we're moving down into the C zone. Now, there's some transports down there that we don't need anymore, so let's move them up. There's a couple of them. Let's go a couple of spaces so that we can use them, at least in the north anyway, we'll be able to use them in the north. Uh, we won't be able to get them back down there this turn, but, but we're hope, hopefully we'll have Calcutta on the next turn. So that's what it looks like now. Um, we, we've moved everything down there that we could, and everybody's taking what they can. And let's see, let's, let's throw a couple of pies down here. So we got one there, one there. We got one back in Yunnan again. And I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So then, uh, might as well move this guy up. Basically though, I mean, like you can see what you're doing here, right? Uh, uh, there's no rocket science to how you're moving this up here. You just, you know, it depends on, on what the rolls were like and everything how you're moving that stuff down there. So that's what it looks like after the end of the second turn. So now we're gonna put this stuff on down here. The 41 my PCs were the stuff that we got. So these things are easy. There's only one place we can put them. We only have one complex. And you can see we have one dude and one artillery. And then we've got these transports here. So, so they'll probably come up here and get them next turn and put them down there. Or you never know, like if the Russians attack, then, then they can put them up here, right? But let's go down there and I'll show you what we're gonna do with the air base and the naval base which is critical to our plan here. Okay, so the air base is gonna go where all the airplanes are, right? We'll put it right in there so you can see it. We'll put that in Quangxi. And then the naval base, like you could put it there too, um, but you know what uh, we kind of decided in the hotel room in Niagara Falls is why not put it here? That service is that sea zone, which is what you really need, right? But uh, if things start going bad, you know, like five, ten turns from now, then it's going to be a lot harder for the Allies to take that, take the naval base out if it's a, if it's on an island, right? They have to, they're going to need some ships to do that. You know, it's not like they can just, uh, you know, catch us napping and and come over with a tank or something and, and take it out of there. Like we put it on the on here, it's, it's just as good as putting it over here, but it's going to be harder to take like that, isn't it? So that's what it looks like after the second turn. All your boats are down here. America is still not at war, and, and they would have bought a few ships, so let's not kid ourselves. Although they might have been going heavy into Europe, we don't know, you know? It doesn't really matter to us, we don't really care. We're going out to Calcutta. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's what it looks like. So then uh, the Chinese are gonna go, and they've already lost a fighter, and they're basically, they can't do anything. Like, they've got one dude there, right? And that's good for us. So we're gonna throw down. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Let's let's say let's say they bought three guys. I think they would only been able to buy two. So let's just put down three guys back here, right? And then um, the British would go and and they would do whatever they can do um, as far as purchases. Uh, probably not too bad. Like they they might have come down here to Sumatra and taken something out instead of going down. To Africa so so they might be doing pretty good as far as uh, money goes right um, but, but uh, there's no way of telling if we're not actually playing a game here now what they should be doing I'll tell you right now and they probably could see it from here right here right now is oh my god there's a there's a naval base there right so they can see look at one two three so the one thing they want to be doing is putting this here right they want to put the destroyer down over here in C zone 37 outside of Malaya because if they don't if you're playing against a player who you know is uh, is not that experienced and, and doesn't see that coming then what's going to happen is on the very next turn like uh, I, I don't think I need to sh yeah I'll, I'll keep going but but basically what's gonna happen is these guys one two three they're gonna take the boats out and then they've got all these planes and that's why we've got the air base there what we need to do as the as the Japanese player is we need to have some place two spaces away. Like one thing the British could do here to stop it right now is uh, is uh, if they were smart they would uh, they would take their destroyer down here like I said into C zone 37 and then they would attack Yunnan here take Yunnan out because the the Japanese need either Yunnan or Shan State in order to sack Calcutta on the third turn and and uh, that's what your goal is and and. 
and you, also you're going to be bringing lots of men so uh, on the next turn and the next turn so if you can't get it on the third turn then just keep trying because uh, the British are going to run out of men before you do but the, the goal for the Allies is going to uh, make you take as long as possible because that's going to allow the Americans like your Navy is going to be down over here right the whole Navy is going to be down over here and and the Americans uh, they're going to have free reign to come across the Pacific and uh, Japan they're, like they're just going to pile as many dues as they can on over there so that at least the Americans can't take them out. Um, and uh, at, uh, at this point too, I'd be buying some more blockers as well. Um, I'll show you that in a second here. But I just wanted to show you what happens down here. Like, uh, yeah, you just, uh, you, you've got the naval base, so you can go three spaces. You got the air base, so you go one, two, three, four, five. You can land on Yunnan. If, if you can't get Yunnan, maybe you can get Shan State. So then there's four, four, five. You can land on, on Shan State. So you need either this one or this one and then you can sack Calcutta. That's all you need. But that's what that airbase does for you. If it wasn't for that airbase, like I never thought of putting the airbase there. I just thought, okay, the planes are gonna have to start in Yunnan. And so that puts you back another turn, right? For you to non-combat move these planes in here and then the next turn to, to try. And that gives the British another turn to stock up on Calcutta, um, to stack their forces there. And it also gives the Americans one more turn to build up and one more turn closer to being at war with you. So that's where the why the airbase comes in. It allows you to do this one turn sooner. Anyway, uh, I'll just pause this and, and clean it all up and be back. Okay, so I've cleaned all that up. Now, uh, now we've come to the third turn. I would have done. Uh, you seen I, I I put on a couple of Chinese dudes. All I did with these guys is I bought the same thing: uh, three dudes and, and two artillery. But I mean, that's you know, like who knows what they're gonna put on? I, I don't know, and you don't know, and. You know, it's, uh, you, you've got to kind of adjust to whatever your opponent is doing, as always. But uh, I'll just, I just threw that on there just for simplicity's sake, uh, and it doesn't really matter. Like you've got a, a force that uh, is is very overwhelming against them, and that's after you lost three fighters. Remember, you lost three fighters in that fight in Szechuan. You you might have not lost any. Like it's quite often that you see that that fight over there where you know they lost, they lose one fighter or nothing. You know, so uh, I was being generous by giving them that many. Okay, so turn three. Um, what I bought, I'll just reach over there. So I, this turn, uh, you had uh, 42 IPCs. So there's two destroyers, two artillery, and six infantry. That's 42 IPCs. Okay, again, you're going to move everybody up in China, and I'm not going to bother with that, right? You're going to move all those guys up. Uh, but uh, now, it depends on what happened down here. It depends on... On what the British have done like if they've if they've left their destroyer back here then um, then for sure you're, you're gonna attack this turn like I said before right like you're gonna go you're gonna go uh, in with your entire Navy here you're gonna take these boats out and then you're gonna go for this and you've got uh, you, you've got all of this stuff to do an amphibious assault with right here I'll just put it out here okay that's one scenario and you're going to bring in all your planes because they can land. Remember, you have an air base. So let's just put all these on there. And let's see what about these things here. One, two, three, four. Nope. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you can't you can't use the planes that are on the on the carriers. But if you would move them up to Malaya or something, you could, right? Uh, you had the option of, of moving your forces up. Um, without attacking Malaya like you could have attacked them But then again, like I said, you're gonna bring the Americans in the war and you look at what you've got up there Not much, right? So that's why I, I don't advocate bringing them into the war if you're going to do the Calcutta, the Calcutta crush But that like I also I, I said earlier um, There's there's more than one way of doing it like you could do it with a J1 attack, right? Uh, try to get it on the fourth or fifth turn or whatever so now if the British player wasn't that good, like I said, the, the, and they didn't put up a blocker, um, and they didn't take Yunnan, then you're going to go on the third turn. But some of the things you got to watch out for, if, uh, if, if, if it is a good player, um, is uh, for one thing, it's uh, the Sneaky Carl. Um, I did a video, it was called Sneaky Declaration of War, and I kind of named it the Sneaky Carl, and it's kind of sticking <laughs> when we were at the tournament there. Uh, Gargantua came over to our table and he, General Hand Grenade, I'm going to need you next turn. I'm about to do the Sneaky Carl, and I just know they're going to argue with me over it. 
No, nobody knows that moose. <laughs> sure enough, he was back 10 minutes later. Okay, I need you now. So I had to go over and I had to explain the rules. And yes, yes, that is a rule. And yes, it is bullshit. And yes, you know, yeah, it's pretty cheesy. Yeah, but it's it's in the rule book. And uh, I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I, I encourage you to go to my video called uh, Know the Rules, uh, Sneaky Declaration of War. And if that's the case, if uh, 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 what they can do is they can bring in uh, a boat over here in into uh into your space over here like that and uh on the british or yeah on the british turn because you're not at war and then on the anzac turn they can uh declare war on you which means that the british are at war with you which means that the japanese cannot load those transports so if if there was boats here like it it, it could be that, that they took these boats, they're thinking, great, and they're going to come over here like I often do. I often bring all my boats over. So if there's no boats over there, then you don't have to worry about it. You can drop all your dudes on Quangxi. But if that's not the case, and, and you know it doesn't look like the British are going to be able to wipe you out over there, no problem, um, then by all means, keep your, uh, like, if there's any, any chance at all that they're going to do that, by all means, keep your stuff on the transports over here, okay? Just so they can't do the sneaky car on you. Okay, so, but we're going to say that we're going to do the best case scenario. We're going to say that that's not what happened. And they came over here. Let's say that they did leave these things here. Okay, you're attacking them. And you're bringing everybody in and the boats and the planes. And, you know, it's just going to be a free-for-all. Um, and, you know, like, you don't have to bring them all. You just have to bring what you need. Like, uh, I would probably leave one of those aircraft carriers back there. I would want to take overwhelming odds for sure. So let's take that out. Uh, we've already bought uh, or brought one of those in. Let's bring one of these in over here. And let's bring a sub in. Um, actually, let's bring another destroyer too. And of course, we're bringing all of these things, the, the transports. So there we go. We're bringing that much in or we're leaving this much behind because now after after we attack them then the americans are going to be at war with us but we have this this naval base here so we can get all of those back up there uh back up to japan um and, and stop the americans in their tracks when they come up like they might have more over there by now right if they were buying heavy over here they might have one more purchase that is on hawaii at this time so we'll see uh, like they could have bought some in their first turn, put it on Western States, and then moved it to Hawaii. So there you go. Like you look at this attack here, and uh, you know what? I'm going to count it up. I'm not going to do it on, on film here, though, or on tape <laughs> film. There's no such thing as film anymore, is there? Anyway, I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I set it up, and the white dice, uh, the, these ones here represent the uh, shots against the aircraft. Um, this would be the anti-aircraft artillery. So there's eight shots because there's eight planes. And remember, we probably would have had more planes than that. We were being gen generous with the Chinese. And also we could have moved our carriers in, into a better position just so that they could, uh, just so that they could have uh, flown in into India. And the Indians, uh, they, they could have brought, had one more shot if we, you know, like if we brought in six more fighters then you know, they only would have had one more shot than what they do now. And then they got 11 at 2, 1 at 3, and 2 at 4. But over here, mm -hmm. this is what we have for uh, the Japanese. So there's 1 at 1, and there's 2, 4, 6 at 2, and then there's 4 at 3, and then there's 2, 4, 5 at 4. And so the big difference here, like the dice, uh, let's say these guys happen to, to take out two planes over here. Um, the difference would be uh, uh, the 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 you're heavier down here where where the, where you're, you're rolling high dice, right? Whereas over here it's almost all twos, and um, like I said, you're probably going to have better odds than this as the Japanese player. But this is this is probably the minimum that you're going to do. And I didn't bother setting the attack up in the water there because you're obviously going to win that fight, right? You've got your battleships and you've got your carriers and you've got all that other crap in there. And they're going to take out those things but um like you're going to take them out probably right and okay so uh, you think well but there's not that many land troops but this is a capital you want that capital so let's say let's say you get down to let's take these ones off and these ones off okay so they've, they've got uh, two fighters left and uh you've taken let, let's take this one off and we'll keep the two bombers and and uh 
we'll keep a fighter as well and we'll keep a, a land unit like we'll keep a, actually no it would be a tank let's keep the tank so then we just take everything else out and we'll take a, a few bombers out so you're getting down to it's like this right uh you've got a tank here and you've got a um a tactical bomber I don't know, a fighter, sorry, and then you've got the two bombers, and then they've got these. So even if they hit two, right, you're going to lose this one and this one. You're going to keep the tank. These guys are going to lose, and then there you go. Your tank takes over Calcutta. Even in, You're probably going to have more than one tank and one bomber left, but it's almost guaranteed that, uh, I mean, the dice would have to be very, very bad for you not to take Calcutta out. Uh, but that's the third turn. That's the best-case scenario. Um, it's likely that you'll have to wait until maybe the fourth turn or something and the big the big thing is is uh getting your navy through like uh if they put a blocker in here or if they've managed to keep yunnan or you couldn't get shan state um but again like the americans don't enter the war until you actually drop this tank on calcutta now the americans are at war and uh so now but you've just taken calcutta's money right and uh you hadn't lowered their money yet you uh you you had uh you had let them keep collecting their money so they're probably at 17 ipcs or around there that's what they start with so then these guys you know you drop them down on there whatever you bought and and i don't know like you, i'm i'm not saying you have to purchase exactly this the, the two things that you do have to purchase naval base and air base there those are the two things that make this the, this plan go but so you uh you drop these things down on there and the American, like you've got your kamikazes, and I left these four planes back here on purpose, just in case they do decide to assault you. Uh, it's going to be awfully tough for them to get going, to get through there. But the big thing is, you take these guys all off here, and you sack Calcutta in three turns, maybe four. So there you go. That's the Calcutta crush that you've heard about. Anyway. Not much more to say about that now, is there? Like everything is going to be slightly different. This is a best case scenario or not even necessarily. Like sometimes I lost more than I probably would have. It might have went even better for you. But that's the Calcutta Crush. Anyway, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.